Hello everyone. Welcome to the online lecture of vehicle testing and homologation. I am Milan Trivedi, assistant professor at LG Institute of Engineering and Technology. Basically, we are actually discussing about the second chapter of vehicle testing and homologation that is engine fuel system and emission testing. Today, we are going to discuss about a very important test of this particular category that is a Mohr's test. So, let's begin with this concept of the Mohr's test. First of all, the Mohr's test is used to find out the indicated power in the case of multi cylinder engine. So, let us first of all clear the concept of the different powers which is associated with the engine then we will proceed with the different taste which is related to the Moore's. First of all we are having these three different powers in the case of engine. The first one is the indicated power that is a power which is supplied to the piston crown that is actually been generated due to the burning of the fuel. Next is the brake power. Brake power is actually the power which is available at the engine shaft. That is nothing but it is a brake power. We obviously know that the power, that indicated power which has been generated over here is having a higher value as compared to this brake power. So, in between we are having a loss of power. That loss of power is nothing but it is a friction power loss. So, these are the three different terms of uh, or powers which is associated with the engine. Here we are actually going to conduct a multi cylinder test in which we need to find out the particular indicated power of a single single cylinder. But in order to perform that we just need to recall the concept of the dynamometer which we had studied in this particular chapter. What we are actually doing is at the output engine shaft we are attaching this kind of a dynamometer. Here you are observing that is a rope brake dynamometer. Rope brake dynamometer will give you the value of the brake power. We already had understood the concept of that. This dynamometer is used to find out the brake power which is available at the engine shaft. So, here we are actually mounting the rope brake dynamometer which will give you the value of brake power available at the engine shaft once all the four pistons are rotated, uh, reciprocating. So, in that way we can find out the brake power value of the all four cylinders. Indirectly that would be helpful to find out the value of indicated power which is available at 1, 2, 3 and 4 cylinders. Let us understand how does that thing happens. First of all in this particular way we actually know that this engine multi cylinder engine rotates right. So, in this particular process step wise you are going to uh, cut off the fuel injection supply of one and the another cylinder. First of all uh, let us say example this first cylinder engine fuel supply is cut off. Later on we will cut off the supply of second cylinder. After that we will cut off the supply of third and lastly fourth. In that particular way we are going to conduct this particular test. But what the fact is say for example if this particular fuel injection supply has been cut off. So, at the same time this 2, 3 and 4 would be reciprocating and that would actually transmit the power to this first one. So, there would be a brake power which is available at this engine shaft, but yes friction power loss would be in all the four cylinders. We actually cut off the fuel supply of one, but still the piston is reciprocating due to the power which is available at 2, 3 and 4. That is why friction power would also be applicated in the case of friction power 1. Let us say when we are cutting off the uh, fuel injection supply of second cylinder, this is second cylinder and we are keeping fuel supply on of first, third and fourth. Then in such case also this second cylinder would rotate sorry piston would uh, be reciprocating due to the power which is available at the 1, 3 and 4. So, naturally friction power would be still applicable. So, here I am just going to explain this concept that even if one of the cylinder is or one of the fuel injection has been cut off, but still friction power would be there in all the four cylinders right. So, that is the concept which I was actually explaining. Now, let us understand the concept of the Moore's test. First of all, this uh, multi cylinder engine would be there which is connected to the rope brake dynamometer. This rope brake dynamometer will give you the value of total brake power which is available. So, that would be written as this particular formula that indicated power 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus indicated power of 4 would be equal to the brake power of 1, 2, 3 and 4 plus friction power of 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, that would be a natural equation. 
now here our process would start what we are going to do is we will cut off the supply of cylinder number one we will cut off the fuel injection of cylinder number one so uh, how the formula would be formula would be in terms of this that indicated power of uh, 2 plus 3 plus 4 would be equal to the brake power of 2 3 and 4 but yes the friction power would be applicable in all the four cylinders just now i had explained so friction power would be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 now we are actually equating this particular second equation with our first scenario so naturally the equation would be in this particular form that indicated power of 1 would be equal to the summation of brake power when all the four cylinders are running minus the brake power when one cylinder has been cut off if you subtract that brake power value then you will naturally get the value of indicated power of cylinder number one this process we are going to repeat for three more times now we will cut off the supply of cylinder number two so what would happen is indicated power of one plus three plus four would be equal to brake power of one plus three plus four plus friction power of one two three and four now again we will have subtraction of this particular equation with our main equation so once you are getting this total brake power and subtracting the brake power when the second cylinder has been cut off then naturally you will get the value of indicated power of second cylinder in the same way you will you can get the value of indicated power of third cylinder as well as of the fourth cylinder just you need to subtract the brake power which is available during that particular scenario with the you need to equate that equation with the main equation when all the four cylinders were running right so in that that particular way you will get the indicated power of cylinder number one two three and four once you sum up that all four indicated power naturally you will get the total indicated power which is available with the multi-cylinder engine so this is all about the most is indirectly we are finding out the indicated power with the help of simple dynamometer uh, earlier we had understood of the, that concept that this dynamometer can be used just to find out this brake power but through the even brake power we can even find out the value of indicated power also so that's all about the Morse test now let us understand the Williams line method this Williams line method is to find out the friction power which is available with the engine indicated power that is due to the heat generation brake power that is power which is available with the engine shaft in between there is a friction loss so we need to identify how much friction loss has been there with the help of this williams line method he had actually developed one graphical method just to evaluate this particular figure that is a, a chart of fuel flow rate versus brake power and the engine is allowed to run at a constant rpm now suppose if you are increasing the particular fuel flow rate kg per hour let's say it is at 2 kg per hour then it will give you the brake power value you need to indicate that with the dot now keep the engine having a fuel supply of 3 kg per hour then just mark the brake power value you will get one point again just have a fuel flow of 4 kg per hour you will have a brake power value mark that value once you are joining that three different points you will get a line kind of structure as shown in the figure this line you will receive now what you actually need to do is you need to do the extrapolation extrapolation means you need to extend the line in this particular reverse direction in a such a way that it is cutting the particular y-axis and it is touching the negative x-axis now at that particular point at which it touch the negative x-axis you need to mark that particular point now from the zero point to the minus x value that is nothing but it is a indication of friction power so in this particular way in this particular graphical way also you can find out the friction power that is with the help of williams line method now last topic in our today's lecture that is about the calibration of fuel injector whenever we talk about a fuel injector calibration the first thing naturally to be clear in our mind that we need to have a proper pressure of the fuel supplied to the particular engine apart from that the distribution of the flow of the fuel should be proper so these are the primary requirement of this fuel injector and this need to be satisfied and we need to check that thing or we need to calibrate thing with the different standards 
So let us understand the concept of that. Here, you, as you show in, uh, in this particular diagram, that the main component of this particular calibration of fuel injection is this particular spring which has been used because that is actually playing a major role in uh, this providing the particular pressure right if this uh, pressure is not sufficient then obviously there is some problem with the spring but that problem is still very minor problem because once you are uh, replacing that particular spring that problem can be easily avoided but the second major problem that is a span of flow that and what particular domain or what particular region the spray is been spreading out that is also playing a major role and the major role is played by the spray tip at the output end of the nozzle right so if that particular part is been damaged then you are not having any other option you just need to replace that particular component right so this two things are being checked under the calibration of fuel injector that's all about the today's lecture thanks for watching